The first Parisian retrospective devoted Madame Grey is taking place at the Musée Bordel in reference to her dream of becoming a sculptor. Here we retrace the long career from 1933 to 1989 of the Queen of Pleats and a first-rate couturier. Through 80 dresses that still stand timeless today. On peut effectivement parler de modernité chez Madame Grey, mais peut-être plus que de modernité, on peut parler d'une création qui est hors We can talk about modernity when it comes to Madame Grey, but perhaps even more so than modernity, we can talk about a certain type of creation, which is timeless and never goes out of fashion. She didn't think about fashion in a logical way, like Christian Dior. She's more in the style of Chanel or Balenciaga. But there was still something else. She had this particular style which gave off the impression of an artist at work. And it was like being presented with the work of an author. She always had an interest in the origins of clothes, whether it was antique clothes or clothes that came from a culture outside of Europe. For example, Indian saris or certain types of Maghreb clothing that interested her. She really liked clothes without seams, mainly. There was a very, very strong interaction between the material and the female form, which must always be highlighted, of course. So we will always be left with something that is timeless. Donc on sera bah, forcément dans quelque chose qui est hors du temps. Pour revenir aussi à ce jeu, enfin c'est important. Returning to this game, to this importance of pleating in her work, is something that seems very, very important to me. The fact is, it acts like a trompe l'oeil, and that is really a constant in the work of Madame Grey. She really played around with the vertical proportions to conceal defects if there were any. Madame Grey didn't make dresses for princesses, she made dresses for goddesses. Isn't me?